Why not keep me company for a while? There'll be plenty of time for work later. This is Lisa. I just realized halfway through recording this video that I forgot to actually hit the record button. Lisa, by just the nature of how we've been doing things, Lisa ends up being the actual very last character that I have on the account. Basically, at this point, every single character is at least A4 or above, uh, which has kind of just always been a goal of mine. As soon as I like start a game, I always like to A, collect all the characters and B, level everything up so that I don't have to like pick and choose or like I, I hate feeling like I don't have the right thing for the right time kind of thing so uh, it's just always like a goal of mine to to get everything leveled up and stuff like that and of course Genshin makes that you know insanely stupidly difficult but anyways uh today we're going to be talking about lisa and going over all of her kit and uh she is a catalyst electro user who has a reputation <laughs> So if we start with our talents here, our normal attack is called Lightning Touch. So our normal attack actually performs four consecutive normal attacks that deal electro damage. Charge attack is just going to do a large AOE electro damaging move. And our plunging attack is kind of like all the other Catalyst users where they turn into their element. So electro here and fall from the air with style. Here you can kind of see how all that stuff breaks down. Now this is at level six. So you can kind of compare that to what you have and kind of see what you have to look forward to. One thing about the Catalyst users is they usually do have a large charge attack damage multiplier so that's actually really nice we have our elemental skill which is called violet arc so on press it actually releases a homing lightning orb and on hit it deals electro damage and applies a stack of the conductive status which has a maximum of three stacks possible uh, to the opponent in a small aoe and on hold after an extended casting time calls down lightning from the heavens dealing massive electro damage to all nearby opponents and the damage actually increases depending on the number of conductive stacks they actually have a applied to the target. So here we can kind of see how that works if we just press it. Uh, the cooldown on it is only one second, which on press is kind of nice. Uh, but the non-conductive hold, so if they don't have any stacks whatsoever, and then stacks of one, two, or three, you can see there a 682% as a multiplier is insane to see. That is really, really nice. Here we have our elemental burst called Lightning Rose. So summons a Lightning Rose that unleashes powerful lightning bolts launching surrounding opponents and dealing electro damage. And the Lightning Rose will continuously emit lightning to knock back the opponent and deal electro damage throughout the ability's duration. So this is actually really nice. It kind of just spawns like this big AOE of just tons of electric damage, which is really cool, but you kind of do have to have a way to keep people inside of it if you do want to kind of deal the maximum amount of damage, but we'll kind of talk about that later. Here you can kind of see how it breaks down with the discharge damage, the duration, cooldown. The energy cost is a whopping 80, so it is kind of expensive to fire off, but uh, just work in some energy recharge and we should be okay. Our first Ascension talent that we actually unlock is called Induced Aftershock. Hits by charged attacks actually apply the Violet Arc's conductive status to opponents, which is nice because that way we don't have to be pressing E. We can just do like, you know, a combination of that and some of our uh, charge attack, which is cool. Next, we have Static Electricity Field, which is the other Ascension talent that we have. Opponents hit by Lightning Rose have their defense decreased by 15% for 10 seconds, which is... Uh, that's actually not that bad because that just increases physical damage that we can do up against an opponent, which is nice. And our throwaway talent is General Pharmaceutics. When Lisa crafts a potion, she has a 20% chance to refund a portion of the crafting materials that were used. So as far as constellations go at level one, Lisa regenerates two energy for every opponent hit while holding her violent arc and a maximum of 10 energy can be regenerated in this manner at any one time. So that actually works out pretty nice because of our just innate high cost energy burst. Uh, this is actually helping to not only increase the amount of energy that we can generate, but to help uh, just get more energy. At level two, we have electromagnetic fields. So holding violent arc has the following effects it increases our defense by 25 percent and increases lisa's resistance to interruption so the thing about violet arc whenever you are holding it to do that huge 600 percent multiplier you are like literally immobile you can't move you can't do anything you just have to kind of stand there and take the damage that's dealt but increasing your defense 
will actually help you uh, resist a little bit of extra damage and the uh, resistance to interruption will help you from not being knocked out of that uh, animation, which is actually really nice. At level three, it's going to increase the level of our elemental burst by three, which is fine. At level four, it increases the number of lightning bolts released by lightning rows by one to three, which is cool. I wish it was a little bit more specific, but okay. At level five, it increases our elemental skill by three. And at level six, when Lisa takes the field, she applies three stacks of Violet Arc's conductive status onto nearby opponents. And this can only occur once every five seconds. So this is actually really nice because it, it literally will help just as soon as you swap into Lisa, you can just automatically start holding your E and do tons of damage that way. You don't have to build up those stacks. You don't have to do, you know, two E's and a charge attack or some sort of combination of charge attacks and E's. Like you can just literally just pop on the field, hold it, take forever to cast it, but still do big damage and then just pop off of it. Now, when it comes to building Lisa, I think most people are going to view her as a support. Um, she is very viable in both support and DPS roles. I think that most people are going to want to stick with her as a support though. So I'm going to talk about support first and then we'll talk about DPS afterwards. But weapons for support, uh, Map of Mare is going to be one of the best options that we can go with. Not only is it completely free to play, but it has elemental mastery, which is the exact same stat that we get from ascending our Lisa here and triggering an elemental reaction grants 8% elemental damage bonus for 10 seconds, max two stacks at refinement level one. So that's uh pretty good. Could also mention the thrilling tales of dragon slayers. We've talked a lot about this whenever it comes to any kind of catalyst user as a support role. Uh, this thing is pretty gnarly. It not only is going to give you extra HP to increase your bulkiness, but it also will help increase the attack of the next character that comes on the field after you switch off of your support. So pretty good. We could also mention the Favonius codex, which, uh, has energy recharge on it, which is very greatly appreciated here. Critical hits have a 60% chance to generate a small amount of elemental particles, which will regenerate six energy for the character. That can only occur every 12 seconds, so it is literally an energy generating machine. And we could also talk about Prototype Amber, which is also a free to play option. I definitely would prefer Map of Mare over Prototype Amber, but uh, HP percent and when using an elemental burst, it regenerates four energy every two seconds for six seconds, and all party members will regenerate 4% of their HP every two seconds for this duration as well. So pretty nice as a support weapon. Now, when it comes to your artifacts, this is going to be pretty cut and dry. Go with Noblis. Okay, that was a joke. Noblis is going to increase your elemental burst damage by 20% and increase your party attack by 20%. So that's actually really, really nice. Uh, for whatever reason, if you feel like you are trying to do something different with Lisa, if you want to go with a full four set of the instructor, that is also possible. Uh, increasing elemental mastery by 80 and upon triggering an elemental reaction, it increases all party members elemental mastery by 120 for eight seconds as well. Or you could even go with a full set of the eggs energy recharge plus 20% which is of course very welcomed here and using an elemental burst regenerates two energy for all party members excluding the wear so eh. but every two seconds for six seconds for everyone else and this effect cannot stack so this is actually really nice for um, some late game scenarios where you're not being a selfish support you're actually generating energy for other party members to do other bursts and stuff like that which in my opinion is probably a true support no matter which set you end up settling on, let's just kind of all agree that energy recharge is probably going to be needed on her. Uh, energy recharge for your sands is going to be really good. Electro damage is going to be pretty preferred here. Uh, there's not too many other things that you would want here unless you're doing something crazy and going for like a full elemental mastery build, which would actually be really sick but uh anyways <laughs> and then uh we do have either elemental mastery or crit rate crit damage depending on which side you feel like is better for your substats, let's kind of talk about energy recharge being probably the best thing that we would want to go with here because that 80 energy to fire is insanely high. Definitely want to try to focus on that. Any attack percents, elemental mastery, of course, is going to be great for extra reaction based damage or even flat attacks could make tons of sense as well. I am recording a video. For your talents, I would definitely focus as a support on your burst first, then you could work on your elemental skill, and then you could definitely work on your normal attack, even if you care. The elemental burst makes the most sense because we're literally using her for that. 
Honestly, it depends on your playstyle if I would even worry about your elemental skill. If you have C6, then this one is a lot easier to justify, but depending on how you play with Lisa, it really just depends. And then the normal attack is just kind of an afterthought to me as a support. Anyways, I wouldn't really waste too many resources on it. Now, as a DPS, this is where it's gonna get kind of interesting. Uh, you could definitely do a couple of things that make Lisa shine when it comes to doing some damage. Uh, for the not so friendly, if you just happen to have these weapons, they aren't free to play friendly at all. Uh, we need to talk about Lost Prayer of the Sacred Winds, Memory of Dust, Skyward Atlas, and even Solar Pearl makes a ton of sense. All these weapons kind of have one thing in common where they, they just do tons of damage in general. Skyward Atlas's big thing is that it gives you extra 12% of your elemental damage, which is insane. Uh, Memory of Dust has an insane uh, DPS spike if you have uh, a shield protecting you, which isn't that hard to pair Lisa with any Geo character or just any character that provides shields for that matter. Lost Prayer of the Sacred Rins ends up having crit rate on it, which is pretty freaking nutty, and also uh, can increase your elemental damage by an insane number as well. And then the Solar Pearl is through the Battle Pass, so you actually do legit have to pay real world money for it, but uh, also has crit rate and your normal attacks are gonna increase your elemental skill and burst damage. And likewise, your elemental skill and burst is gonna increase your normal attack damage. So it's just really good. For some more free to play friendly options, the Wid Sith actually makes a ton of sense here. Uh, it has crit damage and it has the, the three possible effects that you could get at random. So attack is increased by 60%, elemental damage is increased by 48%, or elemental mastery is increased by 240, which is uh, pretty, pretty cool. But probably the best free to play option would be the map of Mare here again. So elemental mastery is gonna be its stat and triggering an elemental reaction grants 8% elemental damage bonus for 10 seconds, max two stacks, so that's actually really really nice uh you could go with the frost bearer i personally don't like it but there are some cases to be made where it could be decent and last but not least we could talk about the magic guide which uh has elemental mastery as well and increases damage against opponents affected by hydro or electro which works for us by 12 percent now when it comes to the artifacts there's going to be kind of like a a split decision here it really just depends on which way you feel like fits you better. Pretty much we would want to focus on either a full set of Thundering Fury or a full set of Thunder Soother. So Thundering Fury makes more sense to me personally because we get Elemental Mastery for Ascending Lisa. It makes more sense to try to focus on Elemental Reaction based damage with her, but it, it just kind of depends on which way you feel like playing her. At a full four piece, not only is it giving us an Electro Damage Bonus of 15%, but it also increases Overload to Electro Charge and Superconduct Damage by 40% uh, and also decreases Elemental Skill Cooldown by one second, which is fine. Uh, but on the flip side of that, Thunder Soother increases electro resistance by 40 which isn't that great to begin with but increases damage against opponents affected by electro by 35 percent so it really depends if you are going like straight electro damage like i just want to do tons of electro damage thunder soother feels better to go with there if you feel like you're going to work in um reactions and stuff like that then maybe thundering fury would be more up your alley it just kind of depends on which one you want to go with but if you don't actually like going with a full four piece of either of those, I would recommend either a two piece of the Thundering Fury and a two piece of the Gladiator as your secondary set, or for the more budgeted player, you could go with a two piece of the Braveheart for the plus 18 there, and a two piece of the uh, Sojourner set, which will give you a plus 18 as well. Basically just stacking tons of attack. No matter which set you end up settling on, let's just try to keep the Hourglass either attack percent or elemental mastery. Depending on which way you decide for Thundering Fury or for Thunder Soother, elemental mastery makes more sense if you're going for the more reaction based. Attack percent makes more sense if you're going for straight electro damage. It really just kind of depends. Uh, I personally would try to do elemental mastery, but that's just me. For our goblet, we definitely want to focus on electro damage and the circlet needs to be either crit rate or crit damage, depending on what fits that one to two ratio or if you want to do something completely wonky, which I think would actually be really cool, is just do everything as Elemental Mastery and just make her a reaction-based powerhouse. 
And then for your substats, let's, uh, I would say crit rate, crit damage is going to be top choice as a, you know, DPS that obviously makes sense. Attack percents, of course, any kind of energy recharge that you can work in and elemental mastery makes a ton of sense here as well. And even some flat attack. So as far as talents go, the normal attack makes the most sense here because we're probably going to be using it the most often. And then your elemental skill and your elemental burst, depending on how you feel like you play Lisa, there is a case to be made where the elemental skill uh, probably should should be second to the elemental burst but it kind of in that sense you're talking more of like a like hybrid uh dps support kind of thing i would say generally the path that i would recommend is normal attack elemental skill elemental burst but just depending on how you play her you may want to switch elemental burst and elemental skill so as far as what we're going to be rocking today, I do have a kind of makeshift DPS build going here. I do have the Solar Pearl at level 60. I do have two piece of Glad, two piece of, not Noblest, two piece Glad and two piece Thundering Fury. Now it's not like the best setup, but crit rate, crit damage looks okay. And as you see here, we do have the 49.8 on our electric damage. So let's go do some stuff. Now, one of the things that I will say about Lisa, because most of her stuff is like her, the way that her skill has like a, a designated radius, the way that her burst has a designated radius on it, you would typically want to focus on someone that can kind of group enemies together, Venti, Sucrose, um, uh, Traveler to, to an extent. Even Zhongli could in some senses make sense there. Basically just keeping enemies inside of those radiuses Radii? Radii. Radii. Keeping enemies inside of that radii makes a ton of sense. So just kind of when it comes to team building, that's kind of like a, a quick suggestion. So our main goal here is going to be to do as many reactions as we can. So let's go ahead and uh, hop down here. You can see, nice. You can see our little press damage there. See how that works. Now we can do charge attack and you'll see everybody jumps to a three. Oh, let's hit that before we get hit there. And we're just going to do these reactions. Just tons of reactions. Bruh, that shield needs to go. Every time I throw down Gooba, these guys run away. Come back. Come back. Okay, and we'll do this. Get inside. Come on. Ah, uh, he lost his stacks anyways. Get that shield out of here, man. Thank you. Let's see if we can hit some big numbers. Ah, uh, it dropped. It dropped to two. That was unfortunate. Same kind of plan here. I'm actually just going to jump straight in. Oh, uh, well. I was going to say I was just going to jump straight in with uh, our elemental burst, but... They beat me to the punch. Let's go ahead and throw this down. Boom. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's uh, let's do some, some nutty stuff. Not that. How many reactions can you do? Look at that. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yep. It, okay. So you can kind of understand the, the biggest like damage spike that she gets is literally from pairing her with anybody that can just set off an immense amount of reactions. But they need to be reactions that can be done off field for her elemental mastery to be the one that takes place. Just as a I, I just kind of want to see how this works thing. I kind of want to jump into the abyss and just see if uh okay i don't want to i don't want to like affect the numbers on it so i'll just do like yeah movement speed's fine oh my god she like flies all right anyways I mean, it still was pretty freaking fast. Oh, 
I mean, not the fastest of runs, but still, that is like, I don't know, that just, that right there is one of the reasons that I think Lisa has so much freaking potential is because not only does she get Elemental Mastery from her Ascension, but you could build her as a Elemental Mastery machine and just do insane just do insane numbers when it comes to like electrocharged, superconduct, overload, any of that stuff. I think that's kind of where her hidden potential lies in her insane DPS numbers. It's not that you're going to see like 200,000 damage at one time with her. Probably not. I mean, you probably could if you, you know, did overload the correct way. But I think that oh, like electrocharged because of the way that it ticks over time or superconduct the way that it reduces uh your defenses and overload just because it has stupid numbers and it's easy to apply like all those things added up i think that's where the secret of lisa lies so hopefully this has brought some insight into uh lisa's kit to you if it has that has been pretty much the entire purpose of the video uh otherwise that's it we are done with all of the characters on this account i'm super happy um the only thing that we basically have to do now is wait for <laughs> luck to take over. Now, I don't expect to be getting um, Albedo or uh, Klee very soon, but Chi Chi, Kaching, and Mona, you know, the, the one character that I have literally been trying to get since I started this entire freaking game, uh, I still don't have. So, anyways, uh, these three characters, uh, especially Kaching, coming with a rated up banner, I'm pretty, like, I am 90% sure I'm not going to touch that banner because it makes no sense for me to touch that banner when I'm going to get her eventually through the standard banner, anyways. Like, I just don't see the point in wasting resources, like real world money. <laughs> Uh, in getting something that I'll eventually get. I can be patient. So watch me change my mind. Uh, but Klee and Albedo probably not going to get anytime soon. Unfortunately, I, I'm not going to do videos on them for quite a while. Um, there is some speculation about some returning characters, but I don't really want to spread any kind of rumors or say anything out of the way for that. So maybe if they do return at some point, I can get them and we can try to look at them. But otherwise, we have talked about every single character on this account. My main goal after this video is released, I'm going to finish up the domains because I, I have started you know talking about domains a lot. And I do want to try to focus on some character specific builds. Like I do want to do a build for a DPS Noel. I do want to do a physical Kaya build. Um, I, I don't know. I just kind of want to do some more like nitty gritty style um, videos for specific builds and stuff like that. Uh, just because I just think that kind of stuff's fun. But anyways, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Thanks so much for being along on the journey. And uh, see ya. Major shout out to Cherry Blue, who is a YouTube member.